Nigel was in Parliament today, and this was during Prime Minister's questions. Just have a listen to, to what he had to say, because I, I was quite impressed. Yesterday we witnessed some extraordinary celebratory scenes outside Britain's prisons, where in some cases serious career criminals were released. And this to make way for, yes, rioters, but equally those who've said unpleasant things on Facebook and elsewhere on social media. Does the Prime Minister understand there is a growing feeling of anger in this country that we are living through two-tier policing and a two-tier justice system? I'm angry to be put in a position of having to release people who should be in prison because the last government broke the prison system. Yesterday we witnessed some extraordinary... Uh, it's always the previous government's fault. Yeah, well, it was a mealy-mouthed reply, and he didn't actually yeah. engage with the substance of the question, which was, you know, around the mm. fact that there is a two-tier police system. I don't remember 24-hour courts for those that burnt the bus and uh, started a bonfire in the middle of the street in Hare Hills. I don't remember... Yeah. A 24-hour court system for the two guys at Manchester Airport who beat a female copper so bad that she had lacerations across her face and a broken nose to boot. I don't remember during the Black Lives Matter riots where in which police officers were thrown off of their horses onto their backs needing hospital treatment for weeks and weeks and weeks requiring or uh, actually sanctioning a 24-hour court turnaround. I don't remember it when pr the uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Teton was stabbed most recently in uh, in uh, well in Kent, and I, I haven't heard anything about that since. Not a peep. I don't remember a twenty-four hour turnaround there. I don't remember a twenty-four hour turnaround after the massacre that took place in Southport. I could go on and on and on. There is just it is quite clear that when you are going after pursuing a carer who posted something on Facebook, when you are going after someone that flew a St. George's flag outside of an Islamic centre, when you are going after someone that, I don't know, posted a, saying, a, a, well, actually said to a police officer, F Allah, uh, and that's worthy of getting you two years in the slammer. You can't tell me that we don't have two-tier policing in this country. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's based around religious sectarianism in, in British policing and lawmaking now. And I think that that is a deeply, deeply, deeply perilous position for a country to find itself in. Eunice. Yes, it is. And again, we have a rise in knife crime. We have a rise in robberies. We have a rise in, you know, London is now considered a dangerous city to live in because people are getting robbed all the time. And and I just don't understand, instead of going off the violent criminals, off the organized criminals, off the big drug dealers, we're going off the people that had the post on Facebook and we're filling our prisons with people that were just giving their opinion online, sometimes not even a wrong opinion. You know, sometimes opinions based on facts, but just because that doesn't fall within the mainstream narrative, they're in jail now. And as you said, we are releasing violent criminals early for us to make space for nonviolent criminals because of their opinion. And it's just absolutely bonkers. Like, again, this is something like a scene out of the film um, Idiocracy. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's basically a film that was made in the 80s about how people in the future are so dumb and it's an idiocracy to the point that nothing makes sense and people are so backwards and we're on a fast track to an idiocracy in this country. Well, mm. I certainly feel like that. I mean, Chloe, you've just mm. done a video on this, I know, but you had Have Nigel indeed. today at Prime Minister's Questions, you had Richard Tai saying, why when there are 10,000 foreign criminals blocking up our jails, explain <laughs> why they are, are not being removed and deported, simultaneously saving the taxpayer billions every year. Well, you might well ask yourself that question, Richard, but you won't get a sodding answer, I'll tell you that for free. Uh, and it, the list goes... I, I've been really impressed, actually, by what Richard has said in Parliament. Uh, more impressed than I have been with Alex Armstrong. But... Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> And uh, Nigel, <laughs> Nigel Farage, hello, I thought his, uh, hello Alex, uh, his in intervention in Parliament today was brilliant. So I've been really enthused actually by what this c cohort of five members of Parliament 
can actually achieve because they are getting mm. recognition. Their clips are going around online. Uh, you know, I posted that. That's got 100,000 views. Now we need to reach 60, 70, where 70 million people, of course. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us. But you see what I mean? The small little cohort, they're doing all right, Chloe. Was that yeah, just I mean, your five... video? I haven't actually watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't mm -hmm. worry. Um, yeah, uh, five MPs are making a huge, huge impact. Uh, thank you, Alex, for gracing us with your presence at last. Uh, empty box is filled. Um, but yeah, just going back to this. So I think there's a reason why Nigel's video has got a million views is because that really, really angered people. I think that video showed just how disgustingly out of touch our MPs are. The way that they all sniggered and laughed when Nigel said two-tier policing and two-tier justice oh, yeah. system, as if he was some bonkers conspiracy theorist, some absolute lunatic for saying that on another planet. When, I mean, Darren, you've just given us a long list. I mean, it took you about five minutes to list yeah. out all the examples of two-tier policing, and that was only, you know, one in a hundred of the examples that we have. There are far, far more. I mean, they're we have the receipts it is obvious as day that we have two-tier policing and a two-tier justice system and the fact that they just sit there and laugh like we're all a bunch of idiots for suggesting that there is such a thing is just disgusting and that has frustrated people but i think that although there are only five mps they are able with the power of social media to have a huge huge impact because although there are only five of them they've been able to project their voice with clips like that you know nigel's got a great big following and we're able to expose the labor party for who they are because those videos go viral and everybody sees them i mean kia starmer to just stand there and just blame the conservative party and richard tice and i know we've just got a graphic here and not the actual video but mm -hmm. when richard tice questioned them on the prisons and it was uh shabana mahmood uh responding again she just blamed it all on the tories oh it's not our fault we've got to release prisoners because the tories didn't bother to build any more prisons and yes the tories did fail however there is absolutely no excuse for taking one person out of prison who has committed absolutely disgusting crimes to put someone else in who's posted on facebook there's no justification whatsoever you can't blame the tories for that yeah we'll get on to a bit more of shabana mahmood later on because she's done something even more mad than that to be honest oh dear but uh it, at, at the dispatch box of the house of commons no less but uh alex are you optimistic about reforms chances because you're a bit of a sort of you know you're on the fence as to whether or not a reformed so to speak conservative party with robert jenrick at the helm that sort of gets you going so to speak <laughs> what i want <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> that would be the um, that would be a very unusual friday night for me um <laughs> look what I, what I will say is this i want the right of british politics to come together we cannot win and we cannot beat labor with divide divided parties we just can't it's not going to happen we will suck up our own votes and we will lose that's the reality now and i i do believe if robert jenrick wins there might be some reform in the in the conservative party because he does share a lot of concerns that average reformers share however that doesn't mean that average reform voters like me feel like they can forgive the Conservative Party so quickly. Mm -hmm. I would need to see real, real change in that party in order for me to vote for them. But what I'm hoping for is a leader in the Conservatives that extend a hand to reform or reform really, and or, or the Tories self-implode and elect someone like Tom Tugendhat, who's wetter than a flannel, and self-implode that way if they do i have i have no sympathy for them and, and that's that's literally it they, they have robert jenrick is their last hope i don't trust kemi badenoch but i tell you what reform are absolutely smashing it i'm going to be going to their conference next week and I, i'm hoping some of i might see some of you guys there and I, let's see what kind of an event reform can put together because maybe the tories are finished uh, Eunice, on that point, on the point of my default position, basically, is that uh, we need to have a, it would be very good at laudable if the Conservative Party did reform, because it would mean that actually we've got more of a chance of them teaming up with the five reform MPs. I'm not saying join 
together as a political party, but to actually vote on thing against things and stand more of a chance as a as a sort of parliamentary force. Uh, but equally, my default position right now is that you can't trust them. No, definitely not. And I've been so disenfranchised with the Conservative Party. I used to be a member of the Conservative Party and actually in their Middle Eastern group. So ever since 2016. However, since the last election, I feel like the repetitive failures of, you know, Liz Truss and Theresa May and Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak. And I just don't see them as an opposition to Labour. I see them as a globalist party. I don't think they stand for true conservative values. And I feel like reform is the only party that does that. Now, the problem is, is that the conservative party is a machine. And how do you reform a machine? Because there's so many powers behind the scenes there's so many people that fund them there's so many people that are their sponsors their donors their lobbyists and if you want to reform a party you have to convince all those people and unfortunately that's the you know the corrupt side of politics where we have a few rich powerful individuals behind each party that govern them so those those are the people that will give you the green light to go and reform a party ideally i would like to see reform take over conservatives and i hope that but the problem with reform is that the reform has this stigma attached to it that oh they're a racist party they're anti-immigration you know nigel farage is a racist and as long as we can separate that in people's minds saying no reform is a center-right party that is the best for this country the conservatives and labor are part of the uni party and i hope Majority, we can convince people, the conservative voters, the same thing that happened to me because I used to be a conservative, but I switched to reform. I think all of us are, right? Mm -hmm. I think if that happens, because reform is a new party, is still not bound by so much, so much, you know, politics behind the scenes, and they would have a lot more freedom in how they do these things. However, the alternative would be is that the two parties join and maybe find some middle ground. I just don't see that happening, unfortunately. No, I feel like the Conservative I. Party is so rigid and there's so many politically correct individuals, weak individuals in there that are career politicians that will never let that happen. Uh, I just hope that the reform can take over. That's my hope. And I yeah. think it's possible, actually. Uh, Chloe, do you think, because this, this, I'm sure you agree with this, that it is an existential moment for the Conservative Party and mm. with reform doing so well within Parliament, if they can prove to people over this parliamentary uh, term that actually they are a serious force and they can actually be competent and, and well, serious, do you think actually the Conservative Party could, there could be the end of days for it? Because, you know, it's not just the Conservatives. Labour are going to actually, I think, have a serious threat made to them in the, in the form of reform in the red wall yeah so i've got a few things to say on this so uh, first of all reform they are causing a hell of a storm in there as we've just been discussing they are being super powerful with their questions they are getting in committees they're getting stuck in they are showing themselves to be serious about what they're doing the conservative part, what I was saying in my video earlier is that to me, it seems like reform are the official opposition to Labour and not the Conservatives. And what is really, really disappointing to see is the Conservatives had an opportunity after being defeated at the general election to do two things. A, to have the privilege of actually being the opposition and being able to now criticise the government rather than them being blamed mm. for everything. Now they've got someone to blame. They had the opportunity to make themselves look strong there. They haven't bothered. I haven't seen them at all. They're doing a bit of, you know, they're chit chatting a bit about their leadership election, but I'm just not seeing any proper opposition. We haven't seen Rishi Sunak at all since the general election. <laughs> Labour have been able to clamp down on free speech in super draconian ways, as we've been discussing, and barely a peep from the Conservative Party. It only seems to be reform that are actually showing themselves to be serious opposition. So that was a golden opportunity for the Conservatives, which they have failed to grasp, which makes it hard for me to think that they are going to be a new rejuvenated party. Uh, and then they had the opportunity to actually do a good post-mortem and a good reflection mm -hmm. as to how they got to this position and you saw what happened to suella suella mm -hmm. was one of the few people in the party that knew exactly why they had lost the election and sure enough 
they didn't stand by her analysis. They got their head in the sand. They don't want to accept it. And then she didn't have the numbers to be able to run as leader as a consequence. You know, I, I sort of put it as we are. And someone's, someone's just I laughed earlier, but I wasn't laughing at you, Chloe. Someone pointed out that if you look on the screen, if you look at Richard Tice, if you look at his hand, it looks like mm. he's holding a cigar. <laughs> it does, does. I just saw that. <laughs> I just saw that comment. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so my view is that actually we are living in a proportional representation world with a first mm. past the post system. So I yeah. think there are going to be red wall seats that go for reform in larger numbers than they obviously currently have, uh, and I think that there will be former. Lib Dem seats that are taken back by the Conservatives and then you find mm. out that you've got this uneasy coalition that has to work together and I think that's what's going to happen if I can... Dar Darren, I think you're spot on. I, I think the best I case scenario... Know. Best case scenario for reform is is that, that <laughs> there is some sort of hung parliament and the two parties that can actually come together are reform and the Tories. I mean, the Tories will increase their vote share in the next election because, like you said, they'll get some of those people who are really angry, particularly the pensioners back. And reform will definitely take some red wall seats. And I suspect they'll do really well. It just depends on how well we can eliminate the Liberal Democrats because they could also join up with Labour to avoid what they'd call a far right mm. coalition. Wait, wait mm. till the next election. You'll see that word, the far right coalition. That's what they're going to call mm. it. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.